Hello students, this is Mr. Downing. Today we're going to talk about some algebra. Now, we have a, a worksheet here. It's going to tie together with our formula chart. So it asks, find a formula that has time, speed, and distance traveled. Now that's pretty straightforward if we look on our formula chart. We can literally look for those words exactly. Now we're going to find that writing out these words over and over will eventually become pretty time consuming, so we're going to use these abbreviations. V equals D over T. The V stands for speed, first of all, because S's look like fives. Also, this V is actually velocity. So, speed equals distance over time. I recommend when you write your T's, you use a cursive T with a little tail. Keeps from looking like plus signs. Now, this is a convenient formula if the problem we're looking for wants to know speed. This is all set up, ready to go for that step six, we're gonna plug in our numbers. However, if we're in another problem and want to know what time equals, this is less convenient. So let's do some algebra, figure out what does time equal. So if we start with the V equals D over T, we wanna get this T by itself. Now, before we even start thinking about anything, if we see an equation and it has a fraction, we wanna get rid of the fraction. How we do that? is we multiply by whatever is on bottom. Multiply both sides. Okay? The reason we're going to do that is because now we have a T on top and a T on bottom. Anytime we have T divided by T, these guys will cancel. Now, anytime you do any kind of multiplication or division to both sides and cancel something, you don't want to keep working in that same spot. You want to go ahead and rewrite just to keep things looking neat. We don't want to miss any problem because of bad handwriting. Now, we want to ask ourselves the question exactly like this. Is my t by itself? No. What's happening to it? It's being multiplied by v. What is the opposite of multiplied by v? The opposite of multiplied is divide. Don't just write your divide right under it, right under the whole side. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're doing the opposite of multiplied by V, or divided by V. Now we have a V on top, a V on bottom, V divided by V, that cancels out. Now when we rewrite it, T equals D over V. Now sometimes it's gonna take a bunch of steps. How do you know when you're done? You ask yourself, is T by itself? This time it is. So what does time equal? Time equals distance over velocity. Okay? Now, let's solve this problem one more time. What if we were doing a different problem than one no distance? Okay, let's start with our original. Velocity equals distance over time. Okay, now we'll look at it. We know distance not by itself. But before we do anything else, let's go ahead and get rid of this fraction. So it's being divided by t. Get rid of the fraction. We hate fractions. Okay, the fraction's gone. Now, if we ask ourselves, is D by itself? Turns out it already is. That's actually all we needed to do. Let's get rid of the fraction that left the distance by itself. So distance equals times by velocity. T times V. There. Our formula had three variables in it. We have now solved for each. Let's do one slightly more difficult. Okay. I'm going to go down to the last one I've written here. Find a formula that has change in time, final velocity, initial velocity, and acceleration. If we look, there is a formula that says acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Now, these little f's and little i's, those are not variables. They're not part of math. We'll never add them or subtract them. We'll never put a number in for them. They are only to tell us which v is which. They're letting us know these aren't the same v's. They're only notes. They're not part of math. You never plug them in. Don't worry about them for anything except for knowing which V is which. They always stay with your Vs. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, probably the most difficult one, initial velocity. So I'm going to write this off to the side here. I have A equals VF minus VI over T. I'm going to try to get this VI by itself. I want to know what VI equals. First thing, I see there's a fraction. Don't think about anything else, there's a fraction. So it's a fraction, get rid of the fraction. 
Just multiply by whatever's on bottom. Okay? So, T times A equals VF minus VI. Now, is VI by itself? No, there's a VF. Now, subtraction makes things confusing too. If you prefer, you can get rid of your subtraction by changing that to a plus, making that a minus. So instead of VF minus VI, it's VF plus negative VI. That means the exact same thing. Because now we can say, is VI by itself? Nope, it's being added to VF. What's the opposite of adding VF? Subtract VF. Or you could say adding negative VF, which is what I'm going to choose to do. But it's important you ask it just like that. What's the opposite of added VF? Add negative VF. The reason I like to use add negative is because it doesn't matter the order when you're doing addition. You can get it backwards in subtraction and miss a problem. That does not happen with addition. So now I have plus VF and minus VF. Those cancel. Negative VF plus T times A equals negative VI. Now the VI is kind of by itself, but not completely, because we wanted just VI. This is negative VI. What I can do is multiply both sides by negative 1, which means that multiplied by negative 1 becomes positive. This thing is positive, becomes negative. That's negative, becomes positive. I can switch every sign as long as I do every single sign. That's my answer. What is initial velocity equal? Vf minus t times a. Now, usually when we write this, we're not going to use this little x for times. We're just going to write them next to each other, and we'll do it in alphabetical order. So I'm going to write down my answer. It's Vf minus at. The order of multiplication does not matter. That is our answer. This is now a really convenient formula to use if the question is asking me for an initial velocity.